Right, here's another little project I need to get done. Um, let's get the camera in the right place. Now, the um, this is a dash cam for my wife's for one of my wife's cars, and the it, it display flicks on and off. It's like as though it's a bad short or something loading something down. It's overloading a power supply or something. I've tested a supply on the car side. I'm getting 12 volts supplied to this connector, um, so I believe it's likely to be the actual display. Now the thing I'm trying to look at here now, now I've got the thing here, um, how the hell do I get into it? Hmm. Can't see any screws. So it must be a case of levering it apart. Must be. Let's have a look. There's definitely some flexing in the casing just there. So let's get something to pry that apart with. Uh. So he wants them to come apart that way, doesn't it? Here we go. There's a clip there. There, clip there, here we go. Let's run more on the top here somewhere. Let's get this thing in. There we go. Alright, front frame, there's the actual screen. Now, whether or not this is even fixable, who knows? But um, I mean, there's a little flex flex cable thing there. So, all we basically, you need to do is get this assembly out and um, see a couple of screws in there and um, power it on my bench and see what happens that's what I need to try and achieve so let's take this jump off a bit too hot now yeah right now I can see a screw there I don't want to take all this foam off because it's there to support the LCD. One screw. Hmm. Don't know, I might have to take it off because I can't see where the screws are. Another screw there. somewhere. Trying to fill them with nail but I can't feel them. There's one there, I can feel that one. Is that in three? Is there one more than that in somewhere? Where is it? I'm trying to set a post. Can't see it. There. Well, I have to peel this off. Much as I really don't want to, gonna have to. As long as I only have to uh, go so far with it, and I'll take it right off, it'd be right. Where's that screw? Come on. Another screw somewhere, I just can't feel it. There it is. There we go. So I've got to figure out what's going on with this. So there's capacitors in there. 
and so the backlight is flicking on and off so I don't know if it's a bad issue with the power supply or if it's a capacitor which is shorting um, or if the display itself is, is failing. I mean, that's, that's the thing, eh? Um, there's a link there. Those two there be backlighting. You can see that on the camera, hopefully. There's two cables coming up here. Those will be backlighting. Um, and yeah. I can see an A and a K on there. So... Um, where do I start? Well, power, I'm guessing. That's a four pin connector. There are three wires, and yellow is often used for video, so that means it's quite likely that red and black truly are red and black. Um, Pull this up and have a look to here. Okay, so the black wire is going to the second one over, or the third pin if you go from the left there, and that has got negative, well, it's got ties to the ground plane in the side, so that's correct. So I think there's actually an option here for having um, this unit can support dual inputs, but there's only a single camera input on here. So you can actually, if you add another wire, you could inject another video source. Yeah, okay. That's a consideration if you're into that. Now, um, so what I'm trying to figure out here, can I get this display off so I'm not fiddling around with that? I think I probably can. It's probably clipped in. Three projects on the go at once. It's always a pain. I've actually got more than that going at once. I've got a few things which I've started and haven't finished, just sitting here next to me on the table, waiting for me to get round to them. Yeah, well, it happens. Yeah. Let's see about this. Yeah, so there we go. There's a ribbon connector there. Let's pop those out and take the ribbon off so I don't damage it. That's better. A bit more comfortable now. Move that out of the way. Now I'm just worrying about this board, not the whole display. So, back to where it was. So under this tape here. I think that's designed for a connector, but they haven't used a connector. The, the wires aren't going through those holes. Those holes are open. So, what have they done here? Look under here. Mind you, this stuff is that's conductive. It's a bit hard. I thought it'd be a bit rubbery. Um, I'm sometimes this stuff goes conductive, and maybe it's loading it down. No, nah, it seems alright. Nah, there's nothing there. So. Let's pop this out. So what I want to do is tap into the power supply on here. There's the positive wire, there's a negative wire there, so I'm going to tap onto those traces there, I think. Just to make sure. Yep. Yep. So, that's fine. So, I can give it power, that's not hard. So I'm just going to look around before I do anything else and see if I can see any actual problems. Because it is, it will all come up and then disappear, and come up and disappear. So, um, it could even be that the display is on the way out and it's shorting out the the backlighting or something. Um, so there's the display wires. They come down here. They are the two in connections on that flat flex. So let's see if I can 
do anything with that, shall we? Uh, diode test. Let's see if I can make it light up or anything. Although, um, let's turn this off for now. Nothing that way around too. Hmm, that's interesting. I expect to get something in one direction. Is there an issue with this? Of course, I'm assuming it's an LED, but it may not be. Maybe that getting nothing is okay. I'm getting nothing either, either direction, but that doesn't really mean anything. Let's just try resistance instead. Getting nothing there. So I don't know what's going on there. I don't know. It may or may not be okay. Um, but I am suspicious that that could be the problem. Is there a break there or something? Also sort of reading just then. This tape's a pain. Because there's a there's a crack just there, see? So that may be that's an issue there, it could be a break. Just trying to get through this tape. It could be the reading I saw was because I was touching the probe, but I haven't seen anything else, so I don't know. I'm not convinced. Well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so, right, let's get back to my original idea. Let's power it and see what I can, what I can do. Um, let's get some wires on that. Have to be some quite fine wires. Or actually, no, I can do this a different way. Let's get a soldering iron warmed up for a start. I've got some. Component leads sitting here. Conveniently. So I'll just solder those through those holes. And clip onto them. I did the job just fine, I reckon. Okay. I did them from different sides of the board as well, so they don't short out. It's a lot again. All right. Down. Right. Come on. Transfer down. Here we go. All right. So that should now allow me to get these and clip them on. All right, so I need to put the display back on. Um, let's just turn everything around. So that's negative. That's positive. Sure that right. Yep. Come on. Yeah. Right. 
see what I'm seeing from the by its settings the um, the picture is there but the backlight is what's playing up so stuff going on bench I don't want that right I've also got to be careful about that bit there touching that so let's just do this with it right so that's negative that's positive and I'm seeing nothing going on there Maybe I have to shove a video signal into it at the same time to get any actual response, but um, that is 12 volts and it's drawing 90 milliamps. But maybe I do need to have a video signal going at the same time, but I see anything. Uh, that isn't, video is not something I'm, I'm that familiar with. So um, it's, oh, I can't turn it off because I need the light. Yeah. Um, need power. I believe that's in properly. No, I can measure power at this point here. Let's try that, shall we? I don't know if it's AC or DC there. Depends if it's a um, unless you're luminescent or not, I'm not sure which it is. So we'll try AC first, uh, DC first. Hopefully that's shorting anything out. That would be bad. So I'm on volts DC. That's on there. This is why you need very small probes. Five volts. Right, so there's five volts going to display. Okay, follow up backlight, sweet. Um, so now I need to check for five volts up here. Maybe you should just get this tape off here, it's really a pain in the ass. Can't measure through there properly. I'm trying to scrape it out of the way by probes, but. Let's turn it off so I can kill it. Tape, there we go. That's easy, isn't it? Look at that. Bit of Captain tape. I've got more, so I'm not too worried about that. Okay, how to go again? What do we have? Yep, I've got four or well, 4.9 volts there as well. So, right now, this is actually looking fine, um, at least in this position. Maybe there's an issue with the brake in there when it's bent the other way. Um, let's unstick it with my bench again. And it does bend around and that is soldered and there's a crack there so I'm suspicious that it could be a brake just there. Let's see if I can do this like so. Make sure it doesn't touch the chassis or each other. Okay, so I'm suspicious about this bit here. I mean, that has bent around. So, I want to get this further up, wasn't it? More like that, wasn't it? So, well, I don't know. The backlight's there, and I can't really tell much from that. So now I'm a bit puzzled. Could it be a break in this wire here? That's also possible. Um, let's test for that. 
Uh, which one's which? I don't bloody know. <laughs> I think. Um, I think that one there was the positive. Pretty sure it was. This measure. Yep. And which one's a negative, I wonder? I think it might have been that one. Nope, not that one. Or that one. Mm -hmm. So it has to be this one then. Shove power into there then and just verify that. Check for any bad connections. It could just be that. Let's try and bend those out so I'm short against each other. Not the chances of that actually. Yeah, I'll shove that in there. <laughs> uh, okay. And if I untangle the wires for a start. Yes, the probe's all the way around. No, it seems stable. Yeah, voltage is getting through, okay. So I don't know, I'm at a little bit of a loss right now. There is nothing obviously wrong. So, um,. That makes things a little bit more interesting, doesn't it? It could be a video feed fault from the rear of the vehicle. It could be a camera problem. Um, I may be able to inject a signal. Be a bit of a bodge. Might be able to do it. Right, I'm jury-rigging a system here, so I have a faulty security camera, the um, infrared LEDs are going on it, so it doesn't give full um, illumination, but otherwise it works. So, the camera itself, at least it used to work, I'll put it away, so power there, now I've got to power this up as well, um, from the same source. Hold on a second, white one is positive. So it's a little bit tricky, I've got to do all these different wires at the same time, so that's fine. That's that there. A pair of there too. So I'm thinking to myself. Well, I'm talking to myself, or you want to see it. I don't know why video is talking to myself anyway, it's not be here. So, yeah, yeah. There's power on the camera. Now I've got the. That's not right. Get the right leads would be helpful. Don't want that lead. I want this lead here on there. That's video. That's positive. That's negative. Alright, you saw the black backlight flash. There we go. See? It's flickering. See that? On and off. Now it's working. Right, now I can actually do some testing. Can I determine what's going wrong? So at least now I know it's definitely the screen, not the camera. So at least I'll narrow it down to that part. 
Um, question is, is the backlight, is it a video feed? Is it something in this ribbon? Or is it something somewhere else? To me it looks like a um, a connection or something somewhere. It could be a bad capacitor. Very likely to be a bad capacitor. But at least now I can actually bench test it. Alright, so stayed on. So moving the ribbon cable around or the flex cable, that's not changing anything. As soon as I touched over there, something changed. So I might just try getting the free spray out and see if I can affect it that way. But I'm suspicious it's probably just a capacitor. Um, let's have a look. Let's see we go. Come on, spray. Did a whole ball, and then we'll probably go around and do. Here we go. See, it's changed over here. Something over there. I think it's not really. It's a bit erratic, isn't it? I'm trying to get the bloody can to spray. Here we go. Right, squeeze the whole ball, pull the whole thing down. Right now it's completely gone. Let's warm it back up. Yeah. Around there change things. Around there, that seemed to be the bit that did the most in this area here. Spray again. No. 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 It's going to prove me wrong somewhere. I wonder if I should just free fire the whole ball. Uh -huh. We got one again. Where is that coming from? Is it that chip which is behind that cable? So I'm going to start over here instead. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so I'm suspicious that cap this there, actually. That cap right there is what I'm suspicious about. So let's power this thing back down. And um, let's replace these caps. Let's see if that changes anything. It's a bit of noise, but we can't do much about that, I'm afraid. <sighs> okay. Interesting what I've used through holes rather than surface mount caps. It's designed for, for surface mount, but they haven't used those. Okay, what's that? A 22 UF 35 volt. Hmm. Okay, and it's pretty small too. Well, 
the same. Yep, most of the same value. So is this one. So Yeah, all the same value. Right. So maybe if I should just do some resoldering as well when I'm at it. Just touch a few points, the larger parts. Maybe it's been an issue with poor soldering or something. It's possible. These inductors don't seem to be wound very tightly actually. Makes you wonder a little bit about that. Could you get down here with that touch of neon against things? If in doubt, we sold the stuff. <laughs> but it is acting like a bad capacitor, you know, shorting, clearing, shorting, clearing. Um, this component here, the legs don't actually fit very well for the. Um, Heads they're designed to go on to. I sold on that one, but you know what? Um, the spacings don't actually match the, the uh, pads, which is quite interesting. I'm going to resolve the laser, and they're probably fine. I'm just going to do them anyway. It's not as tidy as the original, but um, I'm only interested in getting a good connection rather than tidiness. Well, I usually go hand in hand anyway, but this is the wrong size bit I'm using, and too much solder and that sort of stuff. So. This tab actually sold it down. It is to be. It's probably got lead-free solder as well, which is always a um, potential issue. You know, it's uh, often hinders things working well. Let's just hit the crystal as well, just to make sure it's all good. Because I'm not 100% sure where this fault is. I believe it's a capacitor, but um, I mean, this camera's been installed for about four years. So but the thing is, it hasn't had a lot of use, but it sits on a dashboard getting hot, so it's likely it is a capacitor issue, you know. Um, or some thermal issue. This, this capacitor here is actually a bit wonky. Just resolve the net, just be sure it's okay. Right. Um, this didn't seem to get hot, so I'm not too worried about that being an issue. And a part over there which is wonky too. Let's just have a look at that. Let's pop the screen off. Yeah, 
This is a long video. I might have to pause this actually, just to make sure it's all going okay. Actually, I'm going to pause this right now, and I'll come back in a minute. Okay. Uh, I'll just hit that side of the crystal as well after disconnecting this. And seems to be pretty much okay, really. I'm not seeing any actual bad joints, really. But, um, well, there's no harm in actually doing them, even if they appear to be okay. So, because this will be uh, lead free solder. So, uh, you know, that's always a concern. It doesn't tend to hold up very well. This whole lead free solder thing about trying to put less crap into the environment and being more environment friendly ends up with more products being thrown away because of the things failing um, because of the lead free solder. It's ridiculous. It's so short sighted. You know, let's look at the small picture. Yes, so trying to do the right thing, taking lead out of the environment. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I can understand it. But things fail more because you need lead in there to make it, you know, just bond properly. It just needs it. These are other. Artificial ones just don't work very well, and they the products fail prematurely. You know, it's, manufacturers probably love it because it's built in obsolescence. You know, um, it fails sooner, and they have to sell more that way. They probably love it, but um, yeah, I, I really don't agree with it. I really don't. So, so these are the smallest capacitors I've got, which are the same value. All right, so they're about the same diameter, um, but they're longer. Now the original ones are Chong branded, which I've seen in various things, and they're just some not particularly great ones. I've replaced them for several of those. These are Nichicons, so yeah, you know, it's probably overkill for a dash cam, uh, rear view camera. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to put these in and um, see what I can do about getting these as small as possible. I think casing wise, it's okay. I don't think the height's going to be an issue, just got to uh, get them in, that's all. So let's get these pre-soldered, just a bit there, like that. That might be a bit long actually. Hopefully this is on camera. Right. So, it's less than ideal, but it will have to do. Okay. I'll squeeze up a bit more, actually. Get to the side of that regulator. That's better. Right, well, that transistor, I'm guessing it's a regulator. Probably a bit about that long, I hope. <laughs> I'm sure there's probably a uh, a better way of doing this, like maybe putting the proper surface mount parts in. Maybe the surface mount parts actually aren't available in that package size for the value they wanted, which is why they've done it the way they've done it. Which is why I have to do it the same way. I have to admit, I haven't even looked at my service mount parts to see if I've got one which fits. Um, I'm just assuming that based on the values, there isn't one. Okay, set one there. Having it hanging slightly low is probably okay. Don't believe that's an issue. I'm just hoping this fixes it. I mean, I, I don't know for sure this is going to do anything. I haven't even measured those capacitors, but um, you know, that's my my first suspicion is that something is um, shorting. Then resetting and shorting and resetting. And it did seem to be 
related to heat on the capacitor, so I'm fairly sure that's what it is. Just not 100% sure. So just replace them. Have done with it. Don't worry about it. Just do it. Piss her again. Come on, get in there. Try and work around these buttons without touching them. I don't have a lot of time left to play with this actually, I've got to go to work soon. Buddy meetings, anyway. Okay. That's the caps done. I will stick a bit of something on here to hold it in place just to make sure they don't move around. Right, well let's power this up again and see what happens. So that's the video. Uh, this is power. Make sure we get the right around. And we have nothing. Oh, because I haven't got it to display. Oh my god. Because <laughs> uh, I'm rushing. Because I want to get this done before I have to go. Alright. Oh my god, I'm like a dog. Right. Put the display back in. Get up. Get this up. Get up. Right. We have a picture. It's not flickering. Looks like it might be fixed. Hey, looks like we got a winner. Awesome. That looks good. Done it. Catch you later. Have a good one. Alright, so I'm just going to quickly show you this. I did actually test these already, but I was going to show you again. This one here. I think it was this one. Seven U F 2.5. Right, uh, if I go to manual series with ESR, right, being a little bit flaky. Okay, 6.8 UF, 62 ohms. Hmm, seems a bit high, and the value is way off. Right, Do this one again. 16 UF, 2.6 ohms. Even these are still off value. Should be, might depend on what frequency resolution with one kilohertz, so it's probably okay. But um, it's supposed to be 22. This one here, click clip on. Come on. There we go. Clips on. 16 UF, 2.8 ohms. So yes, this one here, a capacitor, was definitely fried. So one of the three was faulty. 
that proved it. Right, that's that one done. So remember to subscribe, all the usual stuff. So if you have a dash cam which has got the screen flickering, open it up, replace the caps. Catch you later.